Good day class. You are welcome to week 5 of Scholar Universal Online class. Today's topic is angles. Angle. What is angle? An angle is the amount of distance between the direction of two lines or surfaces where they meet. An angle is the amount of distance between the direction of two lines or surfaces where they meet. This angle can be classified based on their size. We have acute angle, this angle that are less than 90 degree. Right angle is an angle that is equal to 90 degree. We also refer to right angle as perpendicular angle. We have obtuse angle, is an angle that is more than 90 degree but less than 180 degree. Straight line angle. They are angle that is half of a circle or an angle that is equal to 180 degree. Why reflex angle is an angle that is greater than 180 degree but less than 360 degree. Here are the pictures of those angles I've mentioned. Acute angle, can you see that it is less than 90 degree? This is right angle, perpendicular angle. It is angle at 90 degree. Obtuse angle, this angle is more than 90 degree, but what? It is less than 180 degree. Reflex angle, it is angle that is more than 180 The angle here at the back, you will see that it is more than straight line angle. So it is more than 180 degree. At the same time, it is not up to 360 degree. We call such an angle as what? Reflex angle. Example of reflex angle. Angle like 264, 250 degree, 330 degree. So all those ones are examples of reflex angle. Angle at straight line. That is, angle on a straight line. We we'll refer to it as what? Angle at 180 degree. It is not triangle, just a straight line angle, please. Here, yeah. you will use your protractor to measure out all this angle given to you. Because on your protractor, we have angle range from what is 0 to 180, and on the other side again, we have 0 to 180. So try as much as possible, use your protractor to construct all these angles. One thing is that if you have reflex angle, you can draw out the acute or the obtuse angle. For example, like this one that is 231 degree, you can try to draw its acute by saying 180, remove 180 from it. Are you with me? And construct the remaining acute of the angle or obtuse. Properties of angle. We will try to look at different types of properties of angle. One of it is by intersecting lines. We have different we have two lines intersecting each other. So in that case, this must have given us another uh, it has given us one property, which is what we refer to a vertical opposite angle. So any line that intersects, it gives you vertically opposite angle. Just like A here. The opposite of angle A here is C. Angle B, the opposite of angle B here is what? It is D. So this is to tell us that angle A is the same thing as angle C. Why angle B is the same thing as angle D? Why? Vertically opposite angle, they are equal. So if this one is 40 degree, C will also be 40 degree. If angle B here is 50 degree, this also will be, D will be 40 degree. Are you with me? So we say vertically opposite angle are equal. So when two lines intersect each other, they form vertical opposite angle at the point of intersection. So this is where they both intersected. So the angle for that is opposite of each of them. They are equal. So if A here is the same thing as C, so B here is also the same thing as D. A and C, can you see it? 
B and D are vertical opposite angle, which means angle A is equal to C and angle B is equal to G. Let's see this example one. Find the mark angles in the figure below. Here we have 75 degree, angle B, A, angle C. Okay, look at this, this 75 and here. You will see that they are opposite each other, which means 75 degree is the same thing as A, vertically opposite angle. Is that okay? Look at this 75 and B together. Hmm? Or you look at A and B together. If you look at this straight line, if you draw a circle, a semicircle around it, it gives you angle on a straight line. So when this one is 75 degree, what will be the value of B? Which means A plus B will give us 180 degree, sum of angle on a straight line. That is, your, B, your A is 75 degree plus the B is equal to 180 degree. By the time you move 75 to the other side, it changes sign. Are you with me? So which means B is equal to 180 degree minus 75. And B gives you 105 degree. At the end of the day, it shows that angle B is what? 105 degree. So since angle B is vertically opposite to C, it shows that the angle here is the same thing as angle here. So your C angle, your angle C, is also 105 degree. Then you put the reason vertically opposite angle. Another one of the properties angles on a straight line add up to 180 degree, it gives that the sum of angle on a straight line is 180 degree. You should know that angle on a straight line is a semicircle and sum of angle in a circle is what 360 and half of it you know if i draw a circle now and i draw a line that cuts across the center touches both circumference that is what a diameter so this is an example of it this that we call it like this one let's refer to it as your diameter line now so it's that bisected the circle into two so by the time you cut it off your orange you cut the upper side then that semicircle is 180 degrees because it's half of 360. So angle A plus B is equal to 180 degrees. Angle at a point add up to 360 degrees. That is sum of angle at a point is what? 360 degrees. So when you have the angle A plus B plus C, it is equal to what? It is equal to 360 degrees. I've given you three properties now vertically opposite angle are equal angle on a straight line add up to 180 degree sum of angle at a point is 360 degree and the fourth one is each angle are complementary to each other if their sum is equal to 90 degree this is angle at 90 degree so any angle that you add up together to give you 90 degree, they are complementary of each other. If I put 40 degree here, the complement of this 40 degree is what? 50 degree. Because of what? 40 degree plus 50 degree is equal to 90 degree. So they are complementary angle. Two angles are supplementary to each other if their sum is equal to what? 180 degree. So I have 130 here. What will I add up to 130 degree to give me 180 degree? That is what? 180 minus 130 degree. Which shows that the angle here will be what? 50 degree. So the sum of two angles are complementary each other if their sum is a complement of each other if their sum is equal to 180 degree. So A and S are, I mean, are supplementary angle. Let's see this example together by applying all those uh, properties. The first one, you have 25 degree, 55 degree. Find Y. Here is 52 degree. E, F, G, 190 degree. You have to find all the letters marked here. E, F, G, D, E, F, 
X, Y, Z, A, C, D. So all those letters are the size we are going to find. The angle here is 25 degree plus 55 degree plus Y. And that is what sum of angle on a straight line. Actually, we know that sum of angle on a straight line is what 180 degree. That is half of a circle. And this is this one gives us a semicircle. So y plus 25 degree plus 55 degrees equal to 180. You must give the condition. The reason is what? Sum of angle on a straight line. So by the time you have 55 and 25 together, it gives you what? 80 degrees. Take 80 to the other side. Y is equal to 180 degree minus 80 degree. So the y value is what? 100 degree. So here is 100 degree. Another example too. We are going to pick the angle one after the other. Look at 52 and E. Join the two together. You will see that the 52 and E here is the same thing as 119. Because of what? They are vertically opposite angle. So add 52 plus E is equal to 119 degree. Vertical opposite angle are equal. So take 52 degree to the other side. He gives you 119 degree minus 52 degree. By the time you subtract 52 from here, your answer is what? 67 degree. So this E is 57 degree. With this, you can solve for F. You can solve for G. Let's move on. I try to cut this. I cut out this line with 118 degree and G. Look at it here. If you look at it very well, this one has given me a semicircle, which means G plus 119 degrees is equal to 180. Some of them go on a straight line. So G will now be what? 180 degree minus 119 degree. That is what? The value of our E is 61 degree. Wow. It is G. The value of G is 61 degree. So if G is 61 degree, F also will be equal to what? 61 degree. So G is equal to F is equal to 61 degree. Vertical opposite angle. Let's look at example 3. Here we have different types of letter like 6 letters. And we are to find their sides, their angle. 78 degree is vertically opposite to D. So that means the value of D is equal to what? Is equal to 78 degree. Vertical opposite angle are equal. With this, we can solve for E. This E just cut out E and 78. It gives us semicircle which is equal to 180. That is 78 degree plus E is equal to 180 degree. Sum of angle on a straight line. Take 78 to the other side. E is now 102 degree. And looking at this very well, if E is 102 degree, therefore F is what? Your F is 102 degree. Vertical opposite angle. Let's move down. We have solved for E, D, and F. So let's come and solve for this. 132 degree, Y. They are vertical opposite angle. Can you see it here? So the next one, let's cut out the side of X and 132 degree. I have tried to cut out this 132 degree and X. And you also can see it that it is what? Angle on a straight line. So when you add 132 degree plus X, it must give you 180 degree. And by the time you try to subtract 132 from both sides, your X value will be 48 degree. Which means angle X is now 48 degree. And look at where your X is sighted. There is an angle that is vertical opposite of it, which is Z. Which means the value of your x is the same thing as z and it is equal to what? 48 degree vertically opposite angle. The fourth example, angle B 
is equal to 85 degree. Reason is what? Vertically opposite angle. The way we used to do it, we can choose to cut out this again. Here we have 85 degree plus C. And what can we say about the property? It is sum of angle on a straight line. So we have C plus 85 degrees equal to 180 degree. Try to subtract 85 from both sides to make C to stand alone. So which means 180 degree minus 85 degree gives us 95 degree. So angle C here is 95 degree. And at the same time, this angle C is vertically opposite to A. So which means C is equal to A and is equal to 95 degree vertically opposite angle. Wow. You will see that the example is so simple. And I've also given you some exercises to lay your hand on. And it's as simple as anything. Look at this 11. There is nothing so big about it. Add up all this together and equate it to be equal to 90. So whatsoever you get, by the time you do your addition and division, whatsoever you get will be your U value. Substitute U, the value of U, into each of these and you will be able to calculate each angle. Likewise this, you will see that this one has given you angle at a point. Add A plus A plus A plus 7A together. Whatsoever you get, divide it by what? Use this to divide the coefficient. Use the coefficient to divide 360. You will be able to get the value of your A. Then you will be able to get the value of your 7A. We want to look at parallel lines now. Parallel lines are lines that can never meet or intersect when drawn or when we increase their length. If you draw this more than this, it can never meet up. Even though if you increase it, you want it to be bigger. You are increasing this, you are increasing this. It can't meet because of what? They are parallel lines. But there is a line that cuts across it. We we'll refer to that line as what? Transversal line. So any line that cuts across a pair of parallel lines is called what? Transversal line. Is that taking? Okay? So this line AB that you are seeing, we'll call it what? Transversal line. I've used arrow. That's why I put arrow to indicate the line I'm referring to. So let's look at this. With this transversal line, there are some properties also we need to take note. This X and Y, they are corresponding angle. Corresponding angle are equal. So X and Y are corresponding angle. Likewise, A and B are corresponding angle. The A under here and the B under here. They are corresponding angle. Why? A, X on top. Y on top of this line. Is what? Corresponding angle. One thing I want you to note is that in corresponding angle, one angle is outside while the other is inside. Are you with me? Look at X on top of this. Look at Y inside. Look at A here. And look at B outside. Are you with me? Now, another thing is that your corresponding angle always give you F shape. Look at this line. Are you with me? Look at A and see my B. It gives me F shape. Even if I want to make use of this, let me draw this line again. And look at Y. Look at X. You will see that this one also gives me an F shape. So your corresponding angle is an F angle we have alternate angle also alternate angle are equal both angles are within the parallel lines but on different sides in on different sides we also refer to that as what z angle just like corresponding angle that we refer to as f angle so we also refer to this one as z angle S and T is what? Alternate angle. Q and P, they are alternate angle. And look at it. See my Q here. Look at Q. If I choose 
to separate it. QP is my edge Z angle. And ST, look at the Z shape, alternate angle. So wherever you see an angle of this, they are alternate angle that give you this kind of shape. It is alternate angle. And what it means is that if this one is 30 degree, this also will be 30 degree. If this is 70 degree, your T also is 70 degree. Another one is sum of interior angles is 180 degree. Sum of interior angle. A here is an interior angle. B also is an interior angle. If this is 90 degree, this also is 90 degree. So you adding them together, it must give you what? 180 degree. That is the meaning. A plus B is equal to 180 degree. Sum of interior opposite angles. C plus D must give you 180 degree. Sum of interior opposite angles. So with all this that we have looked at as properties of line, Let's look at this example. Find the value of y in the figure below. We are to find y. But before we can find y, we can use so many methods. I can choose to add 135 degree plus y, which is sum of interior opposite angle. 135 degree plus y must give me 180 degree, sum of interior opposite angle, which means y will now be equal to 180 degree minus 135 degree. So the value of my y is then what? 45 degree. Another way, I can choose to add x and 135 degree. Then I call x plus 35 degree as sum of angle on a straight line, which is also 180 degree. So by the time I subtract 135 from 180 degree, I will have 45 degree here. Then the relationship of x and y is an alternate angle. So that means 45 degree here is equal to 45 degree here. You can see that it's very simple. And in other way, you can choose to relate 135 degree with this unknown side. This 135 degree is an alternate angle to this. And by the time you add this and y together, you have 180. You can also solve y in that manner. Example 2. Find the figure below. PQ is parallel to RS. This is P. This is Q. And this is R. This is S. This is a parallel line. This also is a parallel line. You can see that, that they did not meet. So it's a parallel line. I have to put an arrow here to indicate my parallel line. So we have to find this X. You just need to reproduce another parallel line just like the one that is here the pq still remain pq all what i did is that i extended the line parallel line here and i introduced another parallel line which bisected this angle into two are you there the r and s i also reproduced it and extended it out with my extension you will see that none of this line meets together is that okay so now let's See how we can calculate for all this side. Alright. So if you look at your X and B here, what can we call it? They are, you know, we have 130 here, right? But I've bisected the line into two. So the X relating it to B here, it is an alternate angle. Likewise, B here, this A and 50 degree. Look at this. Look at this. If you look at this, you will see that it has given me a Z shape. So which means A is equal to 50 degree, which is what? Alternate angle. Wow. I'm able to solve for A. Definitely I can find my B because I've been given the angle to be 130 degree. So what I need is to subtract 50 from 130 degree. Look at it here. But A plus B is what? 130 degree. That is 50 plus B. Is equal to 130 degree. Then take 50 to the other side. Subtract it from 130. Then I have what? 80 degree. So since B is 80 degree. And I said B is an alternate angle to what? To X. Look at it. This one also produces 
a Z shape. If you look at it very well, it produces a Z shape. So, which means the value of your X is what? 80 degree. 80 degree. The moment I know when I first turn to this page, you will see that the diagram seems to be complicated, but it's very simple. You can see with this line, it makes it more simpler. Let's look at example 3. We are to solve for M, N, Y, Q, A, B, P. And we were only given what? 56 degree. So let's pick it one after the other. 56 degree is vertically opposite to Y. Are they not opposite? You see that they are opposite. So Y value is 56 degree, vertically opposite angle. We want to solve for M now. Add 56 degree and M together. This one gives you angle on a straight line. So M plus 56 degree is equal to 180 degree. Sum of angle on a straight line. Is that taking? So subtract 56 from 180 degree. It gives us 124 degree. Which means the angle M is what? 124 degree. And M is also vertically opposite to N. Therefore, M is equal to N is equal to 124 degree, vertically opposite angle. They are equal. We have been able to solve for N, M, and Y. So let's move down to this other letter. Let's start with N and Q. We know that N and Q is sum of two interior opposite angles. That is when you add N and Q together, it must give you 180 degree. Don't tell me you have forgotten. Let me refer you back to where I made mention of sum of interior opposite interior angle. This is A plus B, C plus D, sum of interior angle. So you can see we have combined so many angles together now. So N plus Q is equal to 180 degree, sum of two interior opposite angle. What is the value of your hand? 124 degree. Plus Q must give you 180 degree. So by the time you take 124, subtracting it from 180, your Q value is 56 degree. In as much I'm able to solve for Q, and I know that this Q is also vertically opposite to P, so that means Q is equal to P and is equal to 56 degree, vertically opposite angle. They are equal. Okay. So now if you look at N is equal to A, this N and A, they are both alternate angle. So N is alternate to what? A. And we know that alternate angle are equal. So if the value of N here is 124 degree, Therefore, the value of your A will directly be what? 124 degree. Now, A is 124 degree. So simple to find our B now. B and A, they are vertically opposite angle. So if A is 124 degree, therefore your B also will be 124 degree. And the last one is Y. And we want to find P. So we want to use Y to find P. You can use Q to find P. If I know, you know my Q value here is 56 degree. So let me use Y value. Relating Y to P, they are both under here, under here. So Y is what? Corresponding angle to P. And the value of my Y was what? 56. Here is my Y. My Y, can you see? My Y is 56 degree. So therefore my P is corresponding to it. So it will also be what? 56 degree because of what corresponding angles are equal so we've come to the end of today's class this is another assignment for you thank you for listening